Hello, and welcome back to A Gross of Physics. This is day five where we'll start our study of motion. If you take out your notes, you'll see that we'll start the discussion about mechanics. And mechanics is the study of motion. Overall, it is the way we explain how things move. Now, mechanics is broken up into two subsets within that one umbrella of the study of motion, and that is kinematics and dynamics. Now, the first section we'll discuss is kinematics because this deals with the description of motion. And what we'll be able to do is describe the motion of objects using math and also using graphical techniques. So kinematics is just a fancy way to say describing the motion of an object. We can use um, velocity, we can use acceleration, we can use distance and displacement to describe the motion. We can use mathematics to describe the motion so we figure out exactly how long it will take some object to reach a certain point, how fast it's going when it does that, um, and other such uh, characteristics of an object's motion. In addition to that, we also have a graphical technique that we can use as well. And the graphical technique we'll talk about in, an, in another couple of weeks. The graphical technique um, involves making graphs based on the displacement versus the time. So displacement's going to be our y-axis and time, um, uh, time be our x-axis. Uh, velocity versus time and the acceleration versus time. And in each of those cases we'll be able to use the y-axis of the graph for the displacement, the velocity, and the acceleration. And we'll use the x-axis for the time. And we'll talk about that, as I said, later. The second section of mechanics is dynamics, which explains why objects move. And that could be anything from forces to energy to momentum to impulse um, and things such as that. Um, in order to understand why things move, we have to understand how they move and how to describe their motion. So we typically start with the discussion of kinematics first. That being said, the first object within the description of motion, we consider relative motion. And no, I'm not talking about my brother walking down the street. Instead, we're talking about an object's motion with respect to another object from a certain point of view. So the definition we use is an object's motion is dependent upon the ob observer's position with respect to the object. And that's fancy speak for if I observe an object's motion, its relative motion to me is how I observe it. The beautiful part about relative motion is that it can be um, multiple answers for the same uh, person's motion. So we can have one event and we can have different people observe that event differently. Each person's observation can be correct. For example, if you're driving in a car and you look across at another driver next to you and you're on the highway and you're both traveling 55 miles per hour north, then the relative motion between each car would actually be zero. If we were to take away all the external uh, advantages such as the trees, such as the um, scenery, such as the, the fact that we know that houses don't typically move when we're driving, and we put both of those cars in a completely um, white tunnel or a black tunnel, depending upon uh, the viewpoint, we'd be able to observe both vehicles moving at zero miles per hour with respect to one another. So the relative motion of each object would actually be zero in that case. On the other hand, if one of the objects was moving faster, let's say I'm driving in the right lane and a vehicle passes me on the left. I'm going 55 still north and the vehicle is traveling 65 miles per hour north. Well, from their point of view, I would actually be moving backwards. Now on the highway, it doesn't appear that I'm moving backwards because we have all the visual cues on the side of the road. But once again, if we took away all the external viewpoints and we took away all the external visual cues, it would appear as if I'm actually moving backwards from their point of view. On the other hand, my point of view would see that vehicle moving at 10 miles per hour north. I'm traveling at 55, so from my point of view, that car looks like it's traveling at 65 or an extra 10 over the 55. So the relative motion of that vehicle would end up being 10 miles per hour north. There are a number of different um, ways we can observe this. I'll try to give you some more examples as we move forward. Now, 
in terms of the notes of this, it's important to realize that the observer's point of view has a fancy name and it's called the frame of reference. So if I'm in my vehicle and I'm looking at the car traveling at 65 miles per hour to my left, well then my frame of reference is the car that I'm traveling in. The frame of reference of the other driver would be their vehicle. You could even have someone standing on the side of the road. Um, perhaps they, they broke down or perhaps they are uh, just waiting on a regular street corner for uh, the school bus or something like that. Well, from that person's point of view, I could be traveling at 55 miles per hour north. The 65 mile per hour car would be traveling at 65 miles per hour north from a person standing on the side of the road. Hopefully no one's standing on the side of the road where there's um, tr cars traveling that quickly, but just for an example. Now, the fancy word, like I said, the observer's point of view is called the frame of reference. And as a definition, we define the frame of reference as a position from which measurements are made. Um, in order to solve a problem, we need to have that frame of reference be constant. We can't switch from my car to the other car back and forth while we're um, solving a particular problem. So every problem we define a frame of reference and then we solve the problem based on that frame of reference. Relative motion is a um, fairly simple mathematical um, concept but it's a little abstract and it's difficult to wrap your mind around. So what I think is important is that we have a number of example problems and example situations to kind of think our way through. So for example going back to the problem we were talking about if we have the vehicles A, B, and P, car A is traveling 55 miles per hour to the east, car B is traveling 65 miles per hour to the east, and car P, which is my car, is traveling zero, zero miles per hour. Unfortunately, my car did not make it on the highway today, and it broke down. So the questions that they could ask on the regents, on an examination, possibly a quiz, would be what is the speed with respect to the other vehicles. So I'm going to use WRT to represent with respect to. So I'd like you to take a few minutes and see if you can answer the following questions. What is the speed of car A with respect to car B? What is the speed of car B with respect to car A? What is the speed of car P with respect to car A? And finally, what is the speed of car B with respect to car P? During our discussion a few moments ago, I discussed most of the answers to this question. So please take a few minutes and answer those and we'll discuss them momentarily. Now, the key to these problems is to realize that the second vehicle is the frame of reference. So when it says car A with respect to car B, we're actually in car B and looking over at car A. So if we're in car B and car B is traveling 60 miles per hour, car A would actually be moving 10 miles per hour west, or we could say negative 10 miles per hour in this case. For the second problem, if we're in car A, then car B is going to look like it's traveling 10 miles per hour to the east, or we could use positive 10 miles per hour. Car P, from car A's frame of reference, would be traveling at negative 55 miles per hour. And car B, from car P's perspective, would be traveling 65 miles per hour to the east. The important thing to realize is that this is one event. We have three vehicles, two are moving, one is stationary, and each object can be uh, can have a different answer from a different point of view. So frame of reference is a, a fancy way to say a point of view or an observer's um, position or the person who is making the uh, measurements. What's important to realize is that the frame of reference is the center of the universe in this problem and all measurements are made from that perspective. Now, on the other hand, we could have two objects traveling towards one another. In this case, we may have a, uh, two, two buses traveling towards one another on a highway. And they're traveling in different directions. So one's in the north, northbound lane and the other's in the southbound lane. 
on the page it, it could be east and west. Now if each one is traveling towards one another they're going to appear to have a higher velocity with respect to the other. So what we actually do in this case is we add the two velocities to get a final um, relative motion velocity. So if we do the problem where we're going to determine the speed of bus A with respect to bus B. That means we're in bus B. Bus B is our center of the universe. And we appear to see car A traveling, or in this case bus A, traveling at 55 plus 65. So that would be 120 miles per hour. And the direction would be to the east. From bus A's perspective, it's still 120 miles per hour. We're adding the two numbers together but bus B appears to be moving to the west from bus A's point of view. The concept isn't all that difficult. It's just difficult to determine which object we're um, analyzing, which object is the frame of reference, and which object is the observation point being made from. So it's important to read through the problems, possibly make diagrams if necessary, and determine which object we're analyzing and which object is making the analysis. So frame of reference can either be addition or subtraction. The mathematics shouldn't be all that difficult. Um, when in doubt, use a calculator to, to verify that the answers are correct. But make sure that you know which object we, is the one that we're making the observation from and which object we're making, making the observation of. That's the difference between um, relative motion when you're adding and subtracting. If you're traveling in the same direction, typically you um, subtract the two numbers. Um, if you're traveling towards one another, you typically add the numbers. Now, with that being said, we can have relative motion of objects appear differently to different objects um, in two dimensions as well. So if you're sitting in the bus, or on a bus, and you are throwing a ball up into the air, the question is, what is the path of the ball with respect to someone who is on the bus with you? Now, if you think about it, everyone on the bus is traveling at the same speed. So if we're traveling at 30 miles per hour and I throw the ball up into the air, the ball is also traveling at 30 miles per hour in the same direction. So when I throw the ball up in the air, everyone on the bus just sees the ball as moving straight up and straight down. It's no different than if the bus were stationary. On the other hand, if we were looking at someone on, on the side of the road and they were viewing the school bus and I threw the ball up in the air, well, they're outside our moving object, so they have a stationary frame of reference, and they would actually see the ball traveling up and forward at the same time. It would make a parabolic path through the air. So it's important to realize that that same motion, just throwing a ball straight up and straight down from the bus's perspective, would show a parabolic path for someone outside the bus um, standing at, let's say, uh, the side of the road. So that one event, someone just throwing a ball up and down, could have two dramatically different observations from someone sitting next to me on the bus or someone standing on the side of the road observing the bus um, perpendicularly. One event can have multiple um, viewpoints based upon the observers. And we consider this topic relative motion, and we consider the place where the measurements are made from the frame of reference. Just a fancy word for point of view. Well, that concludes our discussion of relative motion. This was Mr. Predwicki, and that was day five of A Gross of Physics. Thank you.